Hi guys, Mr. Off Waffles here. If my voice sounds a little weird in this video, it's because I just woke up. Because I was playing Red Dead Redemption 2 all day yesterday on the stream. The gameplay I'll be using in this video is also of Red Dead Redemption 2, because I just had some gameplay of it lying around. So, today we're going to be talking about the new patch from Treyarch for Black Ops 4, and I gotta say guys, this one is really good. It's really, really good, and it gives us a bit of an insight into what exactly Treyarch are thinking behind some of the decisions that they've made in Black Ops 4 regarding the zombies mode. Now, in order to really get a good feel of why this particular patch is so good, I want to zoom back and talk about some of their previous patches really quickly, and then we'll jump into why this one is just, like, leagues ahead of some of the other stuff that they've done. So... October 21st, they added some miscellaneous changes to zombies, specifically addressing a crash when using the shield with frugal fetish equipped. They added various stability fixes, which never really means anything, sadly. On Blood of the Dead, they addressed an issue with the shield not displaying the correct updated version for the player. On Classified, they addressed a crash when turning on the power in a custom mutations match, but... That was kind of about it. I mean, they said that they were working on other things and working on stability and optimization, but we didn't really get much more info. Then October 23rd, another big patch. Black market progression, network performance, and Merc playlists were focused on there. In Zombies, they again did some miscellaneous changes. They resolved an issue where war paints weren't showing up in the reward stream when they were unlocked, and that was a good positive change for sure, making it a bit more clear when you were actually unlocking your war paints. And they apparently added multiple crash fixes. And they also said that they were tracking zombies host migration problems. They said that they were aware that matches and zombies had been ending when the host leaves the game and were planning a future update to address it. So thank you for your patience. So again, not really a lot of zombies focus there at all, but they're at least talking about it. Then October 24th, they focused a little bit on score streaks and blackout tuning and more stability improvements. Apparently, they didn't have any global zombies changes there apart from general stability improvements, which again, Treyarch, if you're watching this, that just doesn't mean anything to us. Please be more specific if you can with those. We would really appreciate it. But they did say, we've made some updates to PC. We've specifically resolved an issue where neon numbers in Blood of the Dead disappeared when model quality was set to low. That's still an issue on console, though. Neon numbers don't show up sometimes, and so hopefully that's something that they fix. They said that also tracking zombies' stability for future updates, because we've all been saying that zombies is too unstable, and so they said while the team has tracked down and fixed the majority of crashes, not true, in zombies since launch, we know there are still some particularly tricky ones, hell yeah there are, still out there, and we're dedicated to squashing the rest of them soon. Keep an eye on our bulleted notes for each game update, as stability improvements across all modes often includes various crash fixes in zombies. Thanks for your patience while we continue to nail these down. I thought that was really unfortunate that they described it that way, because just saying stability improvements in zombies or stability improvements across all modes, does not tell us if they're fixing the specific problems that we're having in Zombies of the game blue screening when you're doing basic, basic things. It's not just during the Easter egg. It's on round six on a classified. You blue screen. It's in the menus of the Zombies. You blue screen. Like, it's ridiculous how much you blue screen in this game. And just saying stability improvements across all modes, I think kind of disregards the problem in a really weird way. And then October 25th, they actually addressed zombies first, which was nice. I appreciated that for sure. They said that the ether playlist was removed and replaced with classified and blood of the dead playlists. The reason for that is that people don't necessarily own classified, whereas everyone has blood of the dead if they have black ops 4. And so that ether playlist was completely dominated by blood of the dead because there were just fewer people that had classified, so fewer people could have classified matches, right? So they got rid of that. That was a good change. They made some other changes to Blackout Multiplayer as well. But today, the very first thing they say in that little title of their patch notes is October 26th, Zombies Gameplay Updates. There are a lot of really good changes here, and I got to say, I'm very appreciative that Treyarch have done these things. But like I said, gives us a bit of a window into their thought process behind these changes and some of it's questionable. Okay, so with today's game update, our latest Zombies Balancing Pass is now live on all platforms, delivering several highly requested gameplay changes across all Zombies maps. Great, let's cut to the chase. Last Zombie Bleed Out time has been doubled. XP earn rates have been boosted for solo. Ah, legendary. And two player matches. We are spawning fewer Hellhounds on mixed rounds in Blood of the Dead and classified, and players can now use four unique elixirs per round. What? Hello? 
Treyarch have listened so hard there. Holy smokes. We've also made other tweaks to ensure a more balanced zombies experience in addition to these changes. So check the full list below, jump in some matches and let us know what you think. Guys. Okay. Now, they also, a little bit later in the post, mention our free Halloween event content stream goes live across all platforms, adding a limited time second stream to the black market with spooky seasonal cosmetics to unlock. That's interesting because we did already have some Halloween stuff previously, so I don't know if that's going to add more stuff now, but that's coming tomorrow apparently, so uh, keep your eyes tuned on my channel for that. I'll definitely be covering that. But anyway, let's jump into the zombies changes because there are quite a few of them. They say... Zombies. Gameplay changes. They've doubled the bleed out time on last zombie per round from 5 minutes to 10 minutes. Now I want to take a minute haha, to talk about why this is so weird. It's a positive change, but why it's so weird, okay? Zombies bleed out time in Black Ops 4 on the last zombie per round previously has not been 5 minutes. It just hasn't been. So it confuses me that they're saying that they've doubled it from 5 minutes to 10 minutes, when I would have certain rounds where I would be holding a zombie for 30 seconds and the round would end. And if you held more zombies, it wouldn't just end the round, but you'd have to be holding an entire horde pretty much, like more than 24, and then what would happen is zombies would gradually bleed out and it would burn through the rest of your zombies and then eventually they would all just backflip and die for no reason. So it's weird to me that they're saying that it was previously 5 minutes. I don't think that was the case, and if they do think it was five minutes previously. I think that Treyarch might be unaware that there's a bug right now in that case, causing zombies to die out so fast. The other question I have here, though, is if they can just crank that last zombie bleed out time from five minutes to 10 minutes, why can't they just make it an hour? Like, is it a stability thing? Is there a problem with the game that means that if you keep zombies alive, there's some kind of memory leak and it means that it breaks things? Like, I don't see why they couldn't just keep the old system of having zombies not bleed out unless they were damaged. I think that that is a perfectly fine system. It's kind of annoying. It means that you've got to be really careful at the end of a round not to damage a zombie. It's frustrating if you do accidentally damage it and then it bleeds out because of it. But I don't see why they can't just make healthy zombies stay alive. In my opinion, that would be the best sort of solution here. But Five to ten minutes is an improvement, so I don't want to be all negative about it. Thank you, Treyarch. They also say they've increased the XP earn rate in solo and two-player matches. I can say nothing there other than thank you, Treyarch. That is something that I made a specific video about. I said that in solo and in two-player and maybe arguably in three-player as well, but much less so, you were earning less XP and it was meaning that your progression was stunted compared to friends of yours that had been playing in four-player games. And some people responded to my video and they said, well, I just did a test and I was earning the same amount of XP per second in solo and four-player. That was not what I was seeing though in my games. That was not what I was seeing anecdotally on my friends lists with people that were playing solo predominantly being lower levels than people that were in fours and so this will address that i'm sure and i think that this is a fantastic change thank you so much Treyarch, for doing this i'm really glad to hear that you're listening in zombies as well they've reduced the hellhound frequency so spawns on mixed rounds in blood of the dead and classified are reduced thank you Treyarch, so much blood of the dead is no longer going to feel unplayable because of the hellhounds it's no longer dog of the dead and that makes me very happy. Now, I don't know how much they've reduced it exactly because they did say previously that they had reduced those spawn rates and they straight up didn't. They just straight up did not. So we'll have to make sure that this is actually the case in game. But for now, this is really positive. On the elixir side, they've increased max unique elixir usage per round from three to four. That's definitely positive. I was actually under the impression that you could only use one unique elixir per round. But I guess I was wrong about that completely, and apparently it was three, which is weird because I've always seemed to experience the fact that you'll, like, restock your elixir that round, but then it won't actually be usable, like, it'll be greyed out, so I don't know if that's just me misunderstanding the way the game works there somehow, but it's good to hear that it's now th not just three, but four. Great. They've also decreased the cooldown time on common, rare, legendary, and epic elixirs which is fine because I never use them. So a lower cooldown time doesn't really affect me personally, but I know that it does affect you guys. And so as far as I'm concerned, that's a positive change. I literally just stick with classics in this game right now. I think classic elixirs are great. They've decreased the effective time on aftertaste elixir, which sounds like they've made it so that aftertaste doesn't work until you're next revived and it's now a timed thing, which is a shame. 
to be honest. I think that it should work until your next revive, because other elixirs, if you use them, they negate the effect of the aftertaste, and so I felt like it was balanced, but we'll have to see how this works in-game. They've reduced the effectiveness of head scan. Okay, I mean, fair enough. If they thought it was OP, then I guess that's something that it's within their rights to change. They've increased the cooldown time on classic elixirs to balance increased last zombie bleed out time. Boo! That is a terrible change. I didn't even see this before I made this video. I've only just seen this now. They've increased the cooldown on classic elixirs to balance last zombie bleed out time? What? Hold on. No, that's actually really bad. Treyarch. What they're saying there, then, is that, as a community, we are having to trade having a last zombie at the end of a round when nothing is happening and when we just want to break and we want to go and get a glass of water and you need a friend to go hold a zombie for you. We're balancing, basically, our mental health in the game with having an easier time in the rest of the round when the zombies are spawning in and we're trying to use our classic elixirs to get out of tight situations and stuff like that, but they might be on cooldown. That's what Treyarch's saying there. Last zombie bleed out time cannot be equated in any way to increased cooldown time on classic elixirs. That's terrible. Like, I love last zombie bleed out time being increased. I think that's great. But you don't need to make the during the round part of the round harder for no reason when you're making the end of the round slightly better for player sanity. Like, that's just a false equivalence there completely. So, I mean, I think that's a terrible decision to at least label it that way. I wouldn't have been too mad if they just said that they'd increase the time on classic elixirs because they thought they were OP. That would have been fine. But if the reasoning is just because of last zombie bleed out time being increased, that's trash. That's straight trash. So Treyarch, please reevaluate on that one. They've adjusted cooldowns for elixirs in Rush. Okay, fine. They've also corrected the elixir cooldown reduction effect granted by Time Slip. If that means that Time Slip now doesn't reduce elixir cooldown at all, I think that's a shame, but we'll have to see in game. Now, in challenges, they've resolved an issue preventing players from completing the coming through challenge, and they've also resolved an issue where the up close and death slider prestigious challenges would reward the same calling card. That's good to hear. Finally, a miscellaneous change, they've resolved a crash that occurred when triggering brain rot on underwater zombies. Okay, so they're the majority of the zombies' fixes that they've done. They've also said for future updates in zombies, they're going to increase the earn rate for Nebulium Plasma across the board in an upcoming update. This is really, really positive. This is something that we fed back to Treyarch at the review event before the game came out. Like, a lot of you guys think that at review events and preview events, early capture events and things like that, we're just sitting there like slugs playing the game doing nothing. But no, we sat down with them at the end of that event and basically gave them some really solid feedback about how the game needed to change. And one of the things we said, for example, was Hellhounds were completely ridiculous in the game. Another thing that we said was this, Nebulium Plasma. The earn rate needed to be increased, and it's great to hear that they're doing that. They've also said that the earn rate for Zombies XP on Hardened and Realistic will also be increased in a future update to help ensure that our most intrepid Zombie Slayers are rewarded for their efforts. Fantastic change. That's super positive. It's going to mean that there's actually a reason at long last to bother playing on Hardened or Realistic. Realistic is just a joke anyway, in my opinion, but Hardened is maybe something that people could be playing on to try and grind out their XP faster. So, Treyarch, that's a good thing to hear that you're working on. Split screen pausing in zombies as well. We've heard the whispered prayers of high round couch co-op players in need of bathroom breaks. The ability to pause on local co-op zombies matches in split screen is in the works. Thank you, Treyarch. Fantastic change. And finally, mastery camos in zombies. As mentioned previously, we're working on enabling mastery camos unlocked in multiplayer to be applied to weapons in zombies. Stay tuned. I want to just zoom in on something they've said here. We're working on enabling mastery camos unlocked in multiplayer. Pause. That is still part of the problem, in my opinion. If we have to play 50 hours of multiplayer to get to a camo that we want to use in zombies, I just don't think that that's fair. Like, as much as I understand that you want to kind of cross-promote the modes, it just doesn't feel fun to have to go and grind out a mode that you don't like in order to do something in a mode that you do like. Like, I just don't think that that's a good way of making that work. So, Treyarch, I'd like mastery camos to be fully unlockable in zombies, but this is at least a step in the right direction, allowing them to be usable if you already have them from the MP. So, in summary, 
This has been a massively positive game update from Treyarch. Massively, massively positive. They've changed things that were really problematic and also addressed things and said that they're working on them for future updates. I'm very pleased with this. I think that this proves that Treyarch is actually listening to what the zombies community specifically is saying instead of just the general populace. I do think that there are several things now that they still need to fix, and I'll be making a video talking about those specific fixes in a future video. If you want to contribute to that, then leave your suggestions in the comments down below for what else needs to be changed in the zombies mode. I've been Mr. Waffles. thanks for watching the video, guys. Leave a like if you've enjoyed, subscribe, turn on notifications, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.